Hey guys, Luke Nessler from the Moto Marketing Podcast. I want to tell you about the promotion that Racer X is running from now until January 6th. Look, if you subscribe to Racer X, renew your subscription, you're going to get access to the 50 years of Pro Motocross collector's edition calendar right these are limited while supplies last you get a lot with this offer i want to tell you a little bit about what you do get so in addition to the calendar you're going to get one year subscription or obviously like i said the renewal uh 2021 limited edition celebrating 50 years of pro motocross a 25 dollars rocky mountain e-gift card a digital subscription to racer x for a friend, it's an $80 value. It's 30 bucks. Look, this calendar is, man, it's super cool. I'm flipping through. I've already seen photos of uh, Doug Henry. Um, we've got uh, Mark Bomber Barnett. Let's see, what do we got in, in March? My birthday is in March. So, Jeff Ward, Jeff Stanton battle. Really cool stuff. Um, limited edition. I've got one for the office. I'm going to hang it up right after this episode. And I encourage you to jump on it as well. Go to racerxonline.com forward slash moto marketing. Subscribe today. Hey, I want to tell you about Moto Brand. Moto Brand was founded during the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic when the sport that we live for was taken from so many of us, whether it's cycling or moto, waking up on a Saturday morning knowing that your local track was closed, uh, there, there would be no supercross, and for many of us that we couldn't even hit our favorite local riding spot or trail with our crew. We are forced to be reminded of how much the sport of moto and cycling truly means to us. Moto Brand represents a collection of individuals that not only ride, but live to ride. It's what we think of at all times of the day, and sometimes at a detriment to your relationship with your significant other. It's for those that look at their motorcycle or their bicycle as part of their identity. Maybe it's the way that you bond with your son or your daughter or your spouse. Perhaps it's your way to blow off stress of your day job, or even, hey, it is what it is. Maybe even it's your marriage. This sport is more than just a sport. For many of us, it's a way of life. It's what keeps us ticking. It's what keeps us living. Moto Brand was created for a purpose, to be more than just a shirt that you can throw on in the morning, but these designs represent who you are and what you stand for. So I encourage you to head over to the motobrand.com, check out our collection. We have a pedal collection and we have a throttle collection, and there are more designs to come that stand for something. So head over to the motobrand.com, and we'll see you there. Welcome, Welcome to the Moto Marketing Podcast, presented by Racer X, the podcast for moto industry professionals, entrepreneurs, and riders. If you want to grow your brand and business in today's digital first world, you have to know how to turn a stranger into a fan, turn a like into a customer. You have to know how to turn attention into dollars. This podcast is dedicated to keeping you in the know on real marketing tactics that work in the moto world so that you grow your business and help grow the sport. Get ready to learn from the very same marketing experts trusted by Racer X, Lucas Oil Pro Motocross, GNCC, and NBC Sports. They'll help you navigate the world of digital marketing for your moto brand. This is the Moto Marketing Podcast. Podcast. Presented by Racer X. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Moto Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Nessler. Hey, today we've got somebody that uh, I think you're going to enjoy. We've got Chris Kiefer with us, somebody that uh, m many of the Moto fans uh, are fans of Chris. Um, you know Chris from the Pulp MX show. You know Chris from the content that he's created for Pulp. Um, you know Chris now with uh, with Racer X and, uh, and just everything that he's doing with Kiefer Inc. testing, and we're going to talk about that today, how Chris went from an athlete to um, this personal brand that he's created that allows him to have what I think is probably one of the coolest jobs in the world. Um, we're going to tell that story today. In fact, Chris texted me right before we went on air and he said, hey, can we do this a little bit earlier? The dirt's primo. He's going riding today. Dream job, right? So um, Chris, welcome to the show, man. I've been wanting to have you on for a while and uh, I'm excited to have you today. Yeah, thanks, Luke. I appreciate it. It's uh We've been trying to hook this up for a little bit now, so it's nice to get on here and talk with you and uh, start this whole moto marketing podcast thing that uh, I've heard, actually heard a lot about it, so it's pretty cool. Awesome. Well, we're uh, we're glad to have you on. You've had 
Um, you've had a pretty exciting year and in a year that has been very strange for many. Um, any Everything from the fun side, going to Loretta's with your son and, and the success you've had there, but obviously your your personal career. I mean, you've got a new uh, deal going on with FXR. You've started doing some more stuff with Racer X this year. Uh, your content with Pulp is, is always changing and growing. Um, so that's kind of where you're at now, but let's take a step back and, and briefly just kind of tell the story of how did you go from the athlete, um, you know, the, the supercross motocross guy to, okay, I'm going to start shifting into another realm. Let's start there if you would. Yeah. So basically most people know that I grew up in the high desert, California, Sperry, California, and I came from uh, a family that was blue collar. My dad was a mechanic at a at a water company. My mom was um, in a wheelchair since I was in like kindergarten. She had multiple sclerosis. So my family didn't have a lot of money, but we loved going out to the desert on the weekends, enjoying each other's time, riding dirt bikes, um, ATVs or whatever. And of course my dad raced, that evolved into me racing. And as soon as I started riding with my dad and, and then he put me into a, a an off-road race when I was 11 years old. And that evolved into motocross in my early teens. And of course, as everybody knows, listening to this, once you ride dirt bikes and you get that feeling, it's, uh, I've, I've never done any drugs in my life, but I could imagine that's what it would be like, um, r- riding and racing and getting that just, man, I got to go do it all the time. So I wanted to be, of course, I, I hung up all the, the posters and the, the magazine clippings in my bedroom and I wanted to be a professional motocross rider and. Um, unfortunately my, my dad didn't have enough money to take me everywhere, you know, all the amateur nationals. I never went to Loretta's, didn't go to Ponca. I did world mini in Vegas one time. And of course, when I was 18, my dad's like, Hey man, you got to get a job. It's time for you to, uh, stand your own two feet. And if you want to race, you got to do it on your own. So I started doing that. I turned pro early twenties, but it was just local stuff. Right. So, um, as time wore on, I, I started doing some supercross stuff and I just noticed like, Hey, I'm not going to be a, a professional racer that makes money and uses it as my career. So how can I, um, make my dream job? If it's not racing, how can I be able to ride dirt bikes for a living and make a living? Right. So yeah. at the time I was a, a shipper at Al Baker's X stars only. So you guys know what that is. Al Baker was one of the, the head guys at Honda driving the four stroke movement. Um, he helped a lot with Mugen way back in the day. And um, Carl Kramer from dirt rider magazine would come in there from time to time. And I would bug him all the time. Luke, I would be like up his ass every single time he was in there. Hey, do you need a test rider? Do you need a test rider? Finally, some test rider got hurt. I slipped into that spot. They liked what I was about. And that evolved me into being a magazine test guy, which evolved me into being a Yamaha test rider because Ed Scheidler at the time liked my evaluations. And so that right there kind of bump started me to be a test rider. So I knew, okay, I'm not going to be able to race. This is going to be my job. I want to be able to test and work and ride for a living. So that's kind of how I marketed myself in the early stages, I didn't really have key for ink. I didn't think I was going to be some uh, media mogul at the time, but for me, I just wanted to ride dirt bikes for a living and, and support my family. So that's how that kind of started. So with your work at dirt rider, when you were a test guy for there, um, your thoughts have to translate into content for, for the site. Was it, was it the transition similar to when you started testing for the manufacturers um, to where you just had a, that, that content, whereas before it transitioned in, or the, the, the feedback from the test transitioned into content before, was it different how you had to relay that information for this new gig now when you're writing and testing, um, for more than just a, a, a media outlet? Was it, was it very similar or was it completely different even though they both were labeled as testing? Yeah. So for me, just as well, you know, it's hard for me when I first started was to relate what I felt onto back then paper or, you know, on the computer. So I'd had some help with Chris Dennison and some key guys. And there was a, it was Chris and there was another guy at Yamaha, Terry Beal, who was really good at um, proofreading my stuff. They kind of helped me along, kind of articulate what I was trying to say 
And so the reader could easily digest it. And then um, I started getting better and better at it. I'd practice that. And then as I went along, Dirt Rider just kind of, I don't, I don't want to say going downhill, but it just was like the print was changing, right? Not a lot of people were buying print. I was told to say certain things that I didn't really believe in in the magazine world, like where like, you know, hey, we're at some – companies buying advertising, can you test their products? And then when I test the product, uh, some things weren't great about it. And I would articulate that through my story or article and they would change it. I would see it in the magazine. I'm like, wow. And that's, I almost felt like I was dirty or slimy or I just didn't really like it. And that kept happening. And, and I finally just said, you know what? I had enough of it. Um, I'm tired of doing that. I want to do it my own way. And if it doesn't work out, pfft, I'm moving to Colorado. I work at Lowe's. I just want to at least try what I was doing. And yeah, luckily, you know, at that time I was still doing a lot of stuff for Steve at pulp. And uh, he said, Hey man, you want to leave dirt rider? You can come over here. You can write stuff for me. Um, I also think, you know, you should do your own, you know, website brand and just start your own testing company. Cause you kind of already have a name with dirt rider. So that's how that started transitioning over to pulp and Keith rank. So with with the start of Kiefer Inc was what uh, walk me through that because I, I I think that is one of the coolest things about your brand that you've created is you've literally you you now got to the point to where you found a way to make money riding obsessing over the little nuances and details of every single part and 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 communicating that back um what was that was was that exciting was that terrifying were you numb to the entire situation like what was that like to where you made that leap and you're like okay i'm gonna do my own testing program my own brand and take it from there what was that like yeah it was it was all the above i was scared i was excited um obviously you know i have a family i had to make some money and i wasn't getting rich over a dirt rider but i had a steady paycheck and chris dennison uh, was the old editor at Dirt Rider. But once he left, like I said, something was missing over there. And he just said, hey, you should start your own deal. And I didn't believe in him. I was like, dude, there's no way it's not going to work. And finally, I just said, you know what? I have nothing else to lose. I'll try it. I vividly remember driving home from the day I gave my two weeks at Dirt Rider. And uh, I was on the phone and I was crying to my wife because I was so freaking scared because dirt rider was my life for almost 20 years. Yeah. I was, you know, I was there, you know, being a test rider than being an employee. So, um, I got the website off the ground and then for me being myself on the show with Steve, I just said, Hey, I want to roll that over into my testing. I want to be like me and you, Luke, we just got done riding. We're bullshitting on the back of the tailgate. And that's how I want to, for you reading the article to digest this stuff. Right. Right we're motorcycle people. We're not polished human beings. We love going out. We love being outdoors. We love the feeling of the dirt bike. We love the sounds and smells. And I think all of us are wired the same way. So I just started my website and I just started typing articles on, on things that I tested and, and gave real feedback and how I articulate that stuff on my podcast or, or even on my website is just, like me and you sitting on the back of the tailgate and it's kind of caught on and, and how I want to take my advertising and how to, you know, um, have some, have some compensation of what I was doing. I just built it. And, and this was the hard part for me is like, how am I going to be able to stand on my own two feet, tell these people that are reading my stuff that I'm no BS and I'm not taking money just for the sake of taking money and then giving a good review. So, I thought about it for a little while and I was like, you know what? I'm going to get a hold of these companies that I actually like, that I actually believe in, that things that I've tried that I know that work and see if they want to come aboard. And that's mm -hmm. how I built my advertising program is I'll try stuff before some guys, you know, will hit me up and say, Hey, we want to be a part of your, your show. Well, send me your stuff first. I want to see what it's all about. Right. And I've turned people down just because I go, Hey man, no offense. You need some work on your part. I'm not going to take your money at this time. If you want to, I'll help you evolve your part um, on the side. And then once it gets better, and if you still want to come aboard, then that's how I'm going to take the advertising dollars. So um, it saves the relationship Fly Racing was the way. first one to, to do that with me. And I believe in the brand and they just, yeah. you know, hopped on board and then it evolves into more people. 
when we come back, I want to dive into that that business model because that that's one of the biggest questions I had, and I think it's super intriguing how you found a way to monetize your craft of of professional feedback on a product. Uh, when we come back, I want to dive into that. We got Chris Kiefer with Kiefer Inc. Testing, and we'll be right back. Hey, I want to tell you about our friends at Flex Racing. Flex Racing is a one-stop shop for all custom designs and products that you need to look good at the racetrack. Flex creates some of the most stunning and custom race day materials available today. Designing and manufacturing products that help you represent your team and your sponsors. Products like custom pop-up tents, table covers, chairs, umbrellas, bike graphics, bike mats, even gear bags. And I'm telling you, the gear bags, they're sick. We're going to get some made for Impact and our EMTB team. They're awesome. If you need your name or your logo on it, chances are these guys can take care of it for you. Flex also provides rider and team logos, truck and trailer wrap designs, custom t-shirts, and even jackets. Not only are the designs killer, but my favorite thing, the prices, right? They care about giving you the best possible price because Flex is entirely made up of riders and racers. They understand how expensive it is to look good and to be professional. So they've tailored the prices on all the products to be as affordable as possible to help privateers, big teams, small teams, everybody in between save the money that you guys need for things like travel, race fees, food, etc. They simply get it, right? Flex Racing's motto is secure the vision. They know that greatness exists in all of us and they're here to help us bridge the gap between our vision and our reality. So maybe it's time to replace your pop-up from last season or you need some fresh new gear or maybe even need to replace those graphics on your bike to display your team logo. Give my friends at Flex Racing a shot. You can check them out at flexracing.com. Let them know that Impact sent you. Let them know that you listen to the Moto Marketing Podcast and you can save 15%. Hey, big shout out to our friends at FMF. Uh, Little D and the guys are always doing some pretty exciting things, not just with the performance products, but man, they've got the coolest apparel in the game. And I want to give you guys an opportunity to get that at a little bit of a discount. If you go to FMF and, and, and pick up any gear you'd like, hats, shirts, whatever it is, upon checkout, if you enter the code MMP30, MMP30, you can get 30% off. So M M P three zero at checkout and get 30% off your order on FMF apparel. All right. Welcome back. We got Chris Kiefer on the phone uh, with us. Hey, you can check these shows out on YouTube. I know a lot of you listen to them um, on the racer X iTunes. Be sure to check it on a racer X YouTube as well. Um, and you can see, Chris and I's uh, lovely faces. Uh, <laughs> some people enjoy watching it. Hey, so Chris, you were talking about, um, your kind of your way of establishing a relationship with a brand uh, in in a positive way, um, and I like how you approach that because rather than me sending you something, you leaving a negative or or providing negative uh, testing feedback on it, and then now our relationship might be soured. Um, your approach to it was, hey, let me try it out first. If I think that it's ready for my feedback, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll do something. Um, your business model, is that essentially, in lack of a better way of putting, is that, is that how you get paid? Is it an advertising type of a thing to where brands like Fly will work with you um, and they essentially are paying you for content creation, which is really testing and feedback on on their product is that how brands look at it and, and pay to work with you so there's it's a good question actually there's so there's two there's uh two parts to key for ink testing so when i first started key for ink testing it was just a confidential testing company where i would test certain things i was um testing for ktm i test for yamaha i test for honda and i would just be contracted to test you know certain things for them and then that evolved into other companies and then Once I started my website and then did my podcast, I was like, look, I just can't take advertising dollars for, you know, hey, I'm going to do five product tests and put it up on my website and it's going to be glowing and it's going to be great. Yeah. Um, I want to take money from things I believe in so I can actually speak from the heart. Um, I have taken my business in the fact that I know I'm not going to get rich. (laughs) Uh, but for me, I can sleep at night. I know that the, the people that are on my show that I push, I actually would buy myself and I still do buy a lot of stuff myself. I just don't get free stuff and Hey, everybody go get it. I get free and I get paid and 
that's not how I want to build my brand. I want people to know like, Hey, I will buy it too. That's yeah. the stuff that I like. And, um, that's the reasons why I take those advertising dollars from those companies. And like I mentioned earlier, I don't want to bash companies that have maybe some inferior products, right? So I'm not all about, yeah, let me test your stuff and it's, it's, it's crappy. And then I'm going to post it up on my website and let it just blow you out. Right. I'll give you a chance. Like I'll call you or email you and say, Hey man, let's work on this and then try to get it better. And if you can at the time, then I'm going to put that to the side and you won't hear about it on Keyframe. Mm -hmm. But the other layer to this is um, when I started my own business, I knew there was something missing in the media testing world, which was um, human contact. Like you can't talk to Jody. You can't go up to Don. Like it's, it's something that was missing. I felt like within our media testing world, like, Hey, if you got questions, who are you going to go to? Yeah. There's a, mm -hmm. there's some information on a website, but what if you have something further? So I have an open door for my emails. People, several people use it and um i'll tell those people hey man i did test that product it wasn't good at the time and i'll give you the honesty through the email versus right. just saying hey man here's everything crappy about this product everybody go read it yeah you know so yeah. there, there's several ways to get the information through me and if it's through me and myself or through my website or through the show there's just i want to make sure People are spending their money wisely because it's expensive. I didn't grow up rich. I get it. Sure. Have you started to, I have a couple of questions about what maybe your son is is soaking up from everything that he sees dad doing. Have you started to introduce him into the Kiefer, uh, the testing side of, of things to where you're letting him give his input of a young, uh, skilled rider that other young skilled riders might um, want to hear from have you have you started to bring him into that and let him see the potential that's there and, and also leveraging him for additional content i think the first thing i really do with aiden obviously he loves riding dirt bikes and that's what i do and we do it a lot together is i really really try and you can ask everyone around me i really try to make sure he's a good human being first yeah because uh, that's the base of everything i could be have all of this business and i could be with racer x and pulp but if I was shady and I was mean and I was stuck up, um, it just wouldn't work, right? So I just, first and foremost, I try to get him to be a good human being. And then I tell him, hey, man, there's more to life than being good on a dirt bike. Uh, now, in this day and age where you have to have more than just results, like you have to be able to help the company that's sponsoring you sell the product. Right. So it's just not like, hey, man, I want to race. People are going to go buy the product. It doesn't work like that anymore. There's so many good racers out there that don't have rides because they're not marketable. Right. So I'm trying to teach him to market himself through Kiefer Inc. Like, hey, man, this is a great avenue for you, a tool up here that'll be useful when you get older about evaluating, mm -hmm. um, telling people how to communicate. So a lot of these life things that we learned growing up in, in school, I'm trying to help him along with communication, being a good person being able to test, being able to evaluate and being approachable to other people that are at the track. So these are all the things that I'm trying to encompass with Aiden as we ride, as we try to get better, as I try to um, create better technique, keep them safe. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's a rough job, yeah, Luke. No and I'm telling you, being a dad, it is gnarly. Holy <laughs> crap. It's crazy. Well, that was, that was actually one of the things I wanted to ask you and talk to you about is you know, do you think that educating Aiden on it's more than just being the fastest guy and getting a ride there other ways now in a 2019, 2020, 2021 world to where you can make a living in this sport being more than just a pro? We, we have, uh, uh, he's actually a cyclist, but he's coming on after you for another episode. We've had him on once before. He's big into the moto space. Um, his YouTube name is Vegan Cyclist, and he's put out a bunch of content about getting sponsored. Right. And he makes a living as a sponsored rider uh, with brands like Canyon and Whoop and, and all these other brands that they pay him to create content uh, to showcase their product very similar to you. He, he's making money as a cyclist, and there's ways that I feel that moto uh, enthusiasts can make money, even if they don't make it at the highest level. You see AJ Cantanzaro and Waze doing it. I mean, he, he, he wouldn't be racing if it weren't for his schools. Um, right. Do you think that 
uh, that is obviously important for Aiden to learn? Is that something that he's picked up on and you started to see the gears turning, maybe like Danger Boy has as well, to where he sees it's more than just winning Loretta's and then getting a ride and winning lights and going to the big class. Like, do you think he may, it's opened his eyes to the potential of other uh, avenues? Yeah, I do actually. Um, because Heather and I, we both really drive it home. Like when he walks out into the garage and the shop, that's not real life. Like yeah. dad didn't have to pay for a lot of things that are in there. Right. And if we did have to be a normal family that rode dirt bikes, there would be, less than half of what is out there right mm -hmm. so i just make sure he knows that you have to have a lot of tools in your toolbox to attract outside companies you know you just that's just the name of the game now you have to uh you have to be relaxed you have to be cool kid you have to be able to work with people and you actually and i'm sure you know this you have to do more with less nowadays everybody at a job right now is having eight jobs versus just one and you're making the same amount of money. Yeah. This is the way of the world. Now there's, there's just, that's just how it is. And especially in our industry, you have to be good at a lot of things to attract a company from the outside. Back in the day, 15, 20 years ago, you could just go win races and they would come to you. Mm. And I think some of that is missing in our industry too. Is like kids, families assume, Hey, my kid's awesome. He's ripping, he's winning amateur nationals my phone's going to ring. That's not the case. You have to be proactive. You have to communicate. You have to walk up to these sponsors and manufacturers and go, Hey, here's what we can offer you. It's not about what you can do for me, but what can we do for you? Like right. I'm really big on that. Like when I first started with Steve, he always gave me crap. He's like, you hate money. You hate money. I'm like, why? He's like, you never take any of my money. I go, I just want to establish myself and do this for free. I'm going to show you how hard I'm going to work. And then if you feel like I'm worth it, then you'll pay me eventually. But right now I want to show you what I'm about. Yeah. So I will bust my ass first to show you. And then I'm sure I'll get rewarded on the back end. So that's to make this <laughs> shorter. I just think having Aiden, I need to teach him that more. Like you got to have a lot for of sure. things in your toolbox to make your life better. Yeah. As we, as we start to wrap things up, there's two other topics I want to touch on, and one is Pulp, and the, the last one is I want, to, I want you to talk a little bit about the new relationship you have with FXR. So with Pulp, because that is how, I don't know, several years ago now, I got turned on to you and your brand and just the, just the way that your, your personality, I mean, you're, you're the same guy on Pulp as you are in, in real life, so I would uh, assume. Um, and, and it's just, I resonated with you. So then everything that you would say, I would, I would really, it, res, it would resonate with me because it didn't come off as, you know, he's trying to uh, push this message because he's getting paid to do so. You did it in a comical way. You did it in a truthful way. It was the reason that I bought a uh, YZ450 was your, just your honest reaction to that bike. And so I started to listen to you more and then listen to you more. And then it's just I, watching your evolution of your brand on pulp from what it was three years ago to what it is now is, man, it's, it's something special. The whole pulp empire, what you guys have all built is the complete, not the norm at all of what a professional yeah. media outlet looks like in other sports, but it works so well in moto. Right. Talk to me. There's so much that we could cover with just pulp, but just talk to me a little bit about your thought on what pulp has meant to you and done for you and just the fun you've had with that brand. What does that look like over the years for you? Wow. Uh, Steve that's a lot to Steve unpack. This, so I'll, <laughs> yeah, tell, right. I'll tell you. Uh, I, I mean, I tell him at least once or twice a year and, and I like to, I'm a very good communicator. I like to tell people how I feel. And I'm, and I'll tell you Luke that <clears throat> probably if it wasn't for Steve and having, me on the show way back when, even when I was that dirt rider, I was still on the show. I don't think what I've created would have worked, plain and simple. People would not know who I am. I think people would still think I'm a bunch of bullshit if I, just like you said, you could hear what I'm talking about. You can feel what I'm saying. And if, and if Pulp wasn't around, I just don't think anything would have worked. So I owe Steve a lot. I mean, I would say I would I owe Steve 80% of what's going on in in my business, in my, in my life. So, uh, for me, 
Um, I think it's a it's a great tool for fans to get to know not only the riders, but people get to know Steve, good or bad. People get to know me, good or bad, or the co-host that went through there, you know, many, many years. And it, it ties all of us in closer together as fans because you're a fan, I'm a fan. Um, just like I mentioned earlier, we're just we're all wired the same way as dirt bike people. We just love riding dirt bikes. And when all of us can get together and talk about it, it's fun. Yeah. And then you and then you I get to be myself and people think ah, Keeper's weird. He's a weird dude, but it's fun. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Steve's a weird guy, but it's fun. You know, Kenny, you guys when he seem was like on, you're having it. fun on, on that show. Like I know it's I mean, that is Steve's business. That's his everything. But it doesn't come across that way. I mean, you guys, it genuinely feels like it's a group of dudes that get together in Steve's house and just have fun. Um, yeah, Luke. So we never like when I get there, I get there a couple hours and we may talk about who's on the show but it's never scripted like we never yeah. have anything like hey we're gonna do this like it's basically steve and i bullshitting and we have some guests on and, and some i know some i don't but yeah it's just yeah we're just bantering <laughs> back and awesome. forth it's fun what was that first conversation like to where you guys decided hey we're gonna do this thing called key for after dark i've always wanted to know that <laughs> i stepped away from the sport for like three or four years when i was building this business i was in like some dark shit and yeah. wasn't having fun with the clients we were working with. And finally, I got back into it, and I was like, I just binge listened to the last, like, two years of, of Paul. <laughs> and I remember the first time I heard Kiefer After Dark, I was like, what? What like what in the what just happened? And it was right. the greatest thing ever. Where did that idea come from? Was it a joke that became a reality? Talk us through that. Yeah, it was actually a joke. Steve was like, oh, man, we're going After Dark again. Like, <laughs> I just have a lot of, um, I guess – I, I'm just very open, and I think the sexual stuff that we talk about on the show, I think a lot of us can relate to. Like, I've made mistakes that way. I went other directions. I've been hurt. I've been happy, and I'm just very open with my life. So, um, and like I said to you earlier, I, I love to talk. I'm not the normal dude. Like, usually guys don't communicate with their women. They're like, oh, my dude never talks to me. This just doesn't listen to me. And But I'm the opposite. Heather's like, you got to shut up. <laughs> like, I don't want to communicate right now. So for me, being able to talk to people that have problems with um, relationships or whatever, I love it. I just love helping people. And I think that comes from, again, my mom had multiple sclerosis and I took care of her for many years. So I have that nurturing quality inside sure. of me. And for me, it feels good to help people. And yeah. it feels good to have a little self-deprecation um, because I went through, I'd done so much dumb crap and people out there can relate to it. And I like that, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, anytime you're on, I'm like, man, I hope they do after dark afterwards. It's, it's, it, it definitely makes, it's the cherry on top for sure. All right. Last thing, um, FXR, I, I was surprised and delighted at the same time to see that you are, you have this opportunity. And from what I've heard, and we'll kind of confirm if it was a rumor or not, you, it's more than just you testing the gear. I, I believe you're going to have the opportunity to, to have a hand in designing, um, you know, a line in, in within FXR. Uh, so where did where did that relationship come from? What are some of the things that we can look forward to, you know, in the months and years to come with with FXR and your relationship? Yeah. So uh, fly, like I said, fly was the first one to get on my show when I left Dirt Rider. I owe them a lot. Um, I still love WPS, the company. They're all great people. Um, Previously, um, I raced up in Canada for KTM North um, KTM Canada, and Andy White was the, my team manager for several years up there. And um, I got to know Andy. Andy went over to FXR, and I was a fill-in rider for the MX101 team in 2000. I want to say 2015, and I wore FXR gear. And I started talking to Andy when he was there, and he wanted me to wear it in the states because not a lot of people were wearing it. And I met the owner, Milt, and I just kind of created a relationship with all those guys. And, you know, we would do brochures and things down here at my house and we would shoot photos and um, they weren't able to, at the time, join, you know, my show. But as the years wore on, um, they kept pressuring me and pressuring me to say, hey, we'd like to come back on. And just like you said, um, after long deliberation with, with JT and Max at Fly, and I just said, hey, man, I get to uh, create my own line of gear. I get to design and help uh, the gear evolve to make it better. 
And I just wasn't able to do that over at Fly because they're such a larger company, right? Um, FXR is a smaller company. Right. I can work with the designers and the owner directly. And as you know, as we talked about in, this, in the show, is I like helping things along. I like creating things. I like making things better. That fits with Kiefer Inc. testing. So it just made sense that I went back to FXR. And um, yeah, I think... I want to say end of March, early April, there'll be a, a Kiefer Inc. testing designed colorway and nice. gear. So that was one of the huge reasons um, that I went over to FXR and we're, we got a two-year deal worked out and it's uh, it's fun. I, my son's in it. I'm in it. It's like a family atmosphere, all these guys. And I'm on Zoom calls with those dudes <laughs> twice a week, you know, helping the gear along. So it, it's, a, it's a fun family thing. You're probably the only non-pro supercross motocross athlete that has a gear deal and a line of gear coming out and if that doesn't speak volumes for what what is possible with creating a brand creating a following content creation that people seek out um then i don't know what is because you've got again you've got the coolest life you're gonna go ride now um yeah. you're, you got gear coming i mean it's just it's it's endless and it all comes from your personal brand that you've built um man we could go on for hours and, and hopefully we can have you back on again um to just kind of elaborate on some things and talk about fxr and what you're doing with them um you've got an intriguing story man i appreciate you coming on the show um for those that don't know all the channels that they can follow you on uh, if you would quickly share what are some of the channels you're most active on that we can get your content from yeah, so of course you can go to keyforinktesting.com. Um, a lot of how I spread my content out. I'm on the Racer X side for all the video testing and keyforinktesting.com for podcasts and shows and articles. And you can always go to pulpmx.com. I also write stuff that's completely different from uh, Kiefer Inc. stuff. So many different ways to get your information. Um, you're a new new kid like a like my son, he likes watching videos and go to Racer X. You're old school like me, you like reading. You can go to Kiefer Inc. or Pulp. And of course, Luke, podcast is the way to go now, oh, right? Yeah. So uh, Absolutely. you're out you're out you're driving, you can listen to the the Kiefer Tested Podcast on iTunes. Awesome. Chris, I appreciate it, man. It's uh it's been a pleasure having you on and uh hopefully we'll we'll see you at the races this this uh coming year. If we can get some normalcy back in our lives, I think we'll all be stoked about it. Man, I'd be really happy to get everything back to normal again. <laughs> That's right. All right, Chris, I appreciate it, man. Thanks, Luke. See ya. Thank you for listening to the Moto Marketing Podcast. If your goal is to get real, measurable results from your marketing that will grow your company revenue, then check out how Impact Media can get the same results that they have for Moto's most iconic brands by visiting thinkimpact.com. That's T H I N K I M P A K T.com. Have a marketing question that you want answered on the show? Send your questions to questions at Moto Marketing Podcast.com. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. And we'll catch you on the next episode of the Moto Marketing Podcast.